Hello and welcome everyone. Today we talk about dynamically scoped variables in scheme language. I am Andrew Tropin, I work on operating systems and programming languages and do a lot of free and open source software along the way. Let's start from a very simple example. We have a library with two functions. First function accepts a username, inserts the username in a greeting template, prints it and prints new line. The second function accepts a question and the user it greets the user, displays the question, and prints a new line, and that's it. Let's try it out. Let's greet Alice. Works fine. Let's ask question to Bob. Works fine as well. And let's ask a question in a different language. Works good, but greeting still in the previous language. But it would be consistent to greet and ask question in the same language. So what we can do here? First of all, we can change the global variable uh, of greeting template and it will break API. Users who rely on our library will start seeing a greeting in a wrong language for them. Another thing that we can do to pass explicit parameter to questionable function and to greeting uh, called greeting template, but it will also break API of our library and our users won't be happy. So can we temporarily change the value of greeting template and call the questionable function like this? We can try, but it doesn't work. You can see that locally the greeting template has a different value, but the greeting fun function still use the previous value. This is because Scheme is lexically scoped language by, by default, as many other modern programming languages. And actually, it's uh, what you intuitively expect from a language nowadays. But for this case, dynamic scoping would be useful and we can implement. For this, we will need to make a small refactoring. First of all, we will make a fluid for greeting template instead of just a row string. And here we will need to dereference fluid or unwrap fluid and get its value with fluid ref. That's it. Let's evaluate those two things and let's see. The previous calls still works as, uh, as expected. But right now, instead of let, we can use this flu fluids construction, which is very similar in syntax. And we uh, can take a value of fluid ref. Let's call fluid ref without these fluids. And let's call a fluid ref with fluids. You can see the value of greeting template uh, changed. And here we can try the same approach that we tried with let, but with fluids now. And now, the greeting changed the language. It is what we actually wanted. Very nice. And here on those two examples, you can build an intuition on what is lexical, lexical scoping and dynamic scoping. And if we call the questionable function again, we see that uh, the value of greeting template is restored. So it, uh, it value changed only during the invocation of questionable function inside this uh, dynamic extent. That's good. The other thing that is related to fluids is dynamic state. Uh, and there's only one function that uh, we can use to access it is current dynamic state, which captures the current dynamic state and we can save it to the variable. Let's save it to the variable. Let's call the greeting function with this dynamic state. Uh, it works as usual, but we can save the uh, dynamic state, state uh, with updated values of fluids and call the greeting function with a different dynamic state. And you see, it starts to behave differently. That is because all the fluids stored in one location and uh, we captured this location and we used uh, the values for fluids when we were calling the greeting function. This is the di di dynamic, st uh, di dynamic sta state uh, can be shared between threads. It 
it will be by default inherited by child threads and so on. But sometimes we want our fluids uh, not to be captured by uh, this dynamics state and not to be inherited by ch child uh, threads. For this, we can use local th thread local fluids. They look very similar to the usual uh, fluids, but the constructor function is different. It's make thread local fluid. That's it. And as you can see here, we uh, we can set temporary uh, the fluid value uh, to another value, and it will work. It uh, prints another value. But if we capture uh, current dy dynamic state here and save it to the variable and call fluid ref again on the same function with this captured dynamic state, you will see that it contains the original value, not the one uh, updated here. This is because current dynamic state doesn't capture uh, thread local fluid values. That's it about fluids, but one more thing that uh, exists, at least in Guile scheme, but maybe in some other scheme implementations, it's called parameters. Parameters basically is a different interface for fluids. And the difference is following. First of all, the constructor accepts additional argument called conversion function. In this conversion function, we can do some checks and, uh, for example, check the shape or type uh, of the value provided. Uh, to parameter and also we can convert the value into uh, some something different like this and uh, in comparison to fluids to access the value of parameter we just uh, call the parameter as a function so it basically behave uh, as a procedure or function uh, and we get its value and to set the value of um, parameter we just call the parameter with additional one argument like this. And uh, you can see that uh, the value of the parameter is updated according to this conversion function. But if we uh, try to set uh, like a value of a different type, you can see that uh, p should be string error uh, thrown. Okay. The similar way as we can use with fluids construction, we can use parameterized construction to temporarily set the value of TMP parameter. And after we go out of the scope of parameterize, the um, value will be returned to original one. Actually, fluids and uh, actually parameters implemented as fluids and fluids when you uh, call uh, in the scope with fluids uh, multiple times uh, saves the whole stack of all the values. And when you are leaving uh, the scope, the previous uh, value restores. And the same happening if you do non-local exits with exceptions or continuations. And when you re-enter the scope, uh, the value of the fluid restores. When you leave the scope, uh, the value of the fluid returns back to original one. To make a thread local parameters, you can use fluid to parameter uh, function. It accepts a fluid, you can create uh, a thread local fluid and uh, optional conversion function. Uh, you can provide it so it will be checking the um, type or anything else and convert to a different shape. Uh, the, the only uh, tricky part here, that conversion function uh, is not called on original value of original fluid you provided, only when you update the parameter value. Um, that's Basically it, use this caution and I see you in a bit, bye.